Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony and as you know I've just built my first tank. My Tiger One Armatech 1-6 scale tank is now complete um, as you've seen in the previous videos. So I'm kind of at a loose end and when I say that it's, I've ordered another tank as you know which is the M26 Persian tank and I'm really excited about when that arrives I'll start unboxing that and building that along with you guys. So in the meantime, I thought well, I need to do something to uh, give my tank a bit of a challenge because, yes, I've driven it around and I've, you know, across the grass and up and down um, on my sort of patio and everything else. But there's no real challenges for this tank. Now, Armatech used to sell a Bailey's Bridge kit on their site, but they stopped making it for whatever reason. And, I, and from what I understand, there's no plans to to remake it in the future. Um, it was quite expensive for what it was, but even so, it's still an amazing piece of kit to be able to add to you know the challenges that you can put in front of your tank. So as an alternative, I thought, why don't I just build one, right? Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So what I've done is I've, I've, put, this, I've put a plan together and, and I've drawn up some sketches. Um, and I thought, what material? I, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go crazy and spend a lot of money on this. Um, so I thought, do you know what? I'll do it out of softwood. Uh, softwood is readily available from most DIY stores relatively cheap for what it is and you know if it's treated correctly with the right preservative it can be strong enough to last and be durable um, so I'm going to build a, a bridge or design and build a bridge that's going to be strong enough to take my tank big enough to take my tank and be durable enough so it'll last the test of time outside because once it's finished it'll just sit outside and then at least I've got something to practice my driving skills with um, and put the tank through a few challenges so I'm going to start this build. I'd love you to join me on this journey. And if I can inspire and, and help you uh, to do something similar, that would be amazing. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself a budget, 200 pounds, no more. And that budget's going to cover all of the fixings, all of the timber and all of the paint. Now I've gone ahead and ordered all my wood. It's all here. I have got a workshop full of wood offcuts and bits and pieces, but I thought if I was doing this from scratch, what do I need? Um, and I'll also put a list of the materials that I'm using to build this bridge on one of these videos. Uh, so you can, if you were to follow this, it gives you an idea. So I'd like to welcome you back to my workshop. And if, uh, if you're still following me, um, that's amazing. And if you're interested in building this bridge, stay here because uh, let's do this together. And over the next series of videos, we'll get it completed. We'll get it painted. We'll get it outside and we'll get the tank driving over it. So I'm going to go and sort myself out now with some drawings, set the camera up so I can talk you through the next stage of my build. So this is my plan um, and my idea for my bridge. So it's going to be like a suspension bridge. Um, it's roughly going to be about between 1.8 and 2 meters in length. So it's a fair old size. Um, I don't want too much construction element in it because I want to be able to lift it. Um, and I've sort of thought about this in the way of lifting it. I mean, it might have to be a two-man job, but I'm hoping I'll be able to lift it on my own. A um, little sort of a, a section through the bridge um, of the main structural spine of the bridge. Um, it needs to be wide enough to take the width of the tank, long enough to take the length of the tank, and of course, high enough to take the height of the tank, um, assuming there's an aerial. And then I've just sort of worked up some details of how I'm going to fix the uh, the running planks onto the main structure. Some ideas about handrails. Hey, look, it's going to be artistic license, really, when I do this. Um, if it gets anywhere near this kind of look at the end, I'll be over the moon. Um, and then I've just gone out and I've bought all and I've had all my timber delivered. Or oh, it's just all softwood. Um, and as I said, came to no more than £160 with the softwood and, uh, and the fixings. So... That's it. Um, now, obviously, I'm lucky enough. I've got the tools. Um, I have got a crosscut saw, and I've got a pillar drill, and I've got other various other tools. But I mean, if you didn't have that sort of thing, can all of this can be done by hand? Uh, it doesn't stop you doing what you're doing. So I'm going to crack on now, start getting all my tools ready, get my workshop ready, and set up to build this bridge. And I really hope you're going to join me on the same journey. Speak soon. Right. So I've basically just dry fitted, um, if you like, the the framework of the base of the bridge on my bench just to give you an idea nothing's fixed nothing's really cut yet I mean this still has to be cut to length um, but I wanted to just set out uh, check the size of the tank and set out the the idea for the actual running plank so this here is only a 12 by 44 mil piece of timber so it's quite like narrow gauge um, but 
in scale, I think I'm happy with it. And I'm going to put two supporting members underneath it, which are effectively these two timbers here, which are effect it's a three by two uh, plain down CLS timber. So they come slightly undersized. And then the outrunners are a four by two, again, plain down slightly less than that. It's about 89 mil by, I think it's 32 or 33 mil, something like that. Um, sorry, 38 mil. Um, so I'm just sitting it out. So it's going to be a big bridge. But as I said, I mean, you know, the tank is there. Um, I'm happy with the width. I've given it around about four inches clearance either side. So as the tank drives across this bridge, it'll have some uh, movement. So um, you know, if you're not perfect steering or you're still trying to, you know, command your steering, um, but also just, you know, just gives the tank a bit of space. And I thought, you know, who knows, I might be able to set up, you know, a couple of machine gun nests on the end here. So this is really the very, very early stages, but I wanted to share with you how I'm sort of, got, you know, how I'm starting the approach to this. So I'm going to effectively, I'm going to cut this down at an angle. And so I've got a bit of a ramp up onto the bridge. Um, so if it's in its static, just flat on the ground, it still has a way of ramping up onto the bridge and over um, and then I'm gonna have these main rigs sort of slightly overrun so that if I do eventually um, create a if you like a trench or something for this to go over I can bury this in the ground obviously once it's had plenty and plenty of preservative put on it then run the full length I'm gonna do it around about I think 1.9 meters um, it, for, for Imperial, I wouldn't be able to work that out, but it's a 1900 millimeters in length. So it's going to be fairly long, but not as long as it currently is on here. So it'll be a little bit, bit more manageable. Um, and I think, uh, once I've got this base built, I'll be able to start working up the framework for the suspension and the main structural sort of, uh, central piece. And then what I'm using is I'm using these five mil gauge hex fixings. I'll pre-drill all of these and I'm planning to put two fixings in each one of these on either side. Um, I may then decide, uh, it's like anything, you know, you, you, you sort of alter this as you go along, no real fixed plan. I might either glue and nail this down to the center pieces here or put a central piece in. Um, I'm less likely, I'm thinking about it, I probably will nail and glue these down so that they don't sort of interfere with the tracks. So I'll just do the perimeters with two in each. And I think that they'll look pretty good. It'll look, you know, slightly bigger than normal, but you know, again, it's artistic license, but they'll look right rather than using Phillips or, or slotted head screws. I think these hex fittings are probably the most appropriate. And I've gone for a five mil gauge. There's a bit of strength in them. And these are actually self tapping or self drilling. So pre drill, you know, your, your sort of your surface piece, and then the rest of it will just dig and, and, and fix into this. And then these sides will all be bolted in through with a larger six mil um sort of fixings all right so um i started setting out and cutting some of the timber uh first thing i wanted to do is to work out the angle of the, the ramp now it's going to be difficult to see at the distance of the camera but effectively uh this is how much i've taken off of the end so what i did is i worked out i wanted to be quite a short ramp quite a steep ramp more than capable the tanks more than capable of dealing with that so on the end of the timber i marked up i, I measured 10 mil then I measured back 200 mil, struck a line, and then I using a gauge, an angular gauge such as that, I've, I just marked, scribed it with a pencil line, and then using my crosscut draw saw, was able to cut that through um, quite simple. So now that all four of these all perfectly match this end, I'm now going to decide the length of the bridge. Um, having measured a tank a couple of times again, I think I'm probably going to have to make this a little bit bigger, maybe about two meters. Um, it seems bigger, to, but you know, it, is, it is what it is. When you're working in this kind of scale, these things need to be this kind of size. So I'm going to now um, just measure back. So I'll probably time lapse all this because this is going to be as boring as hell. But I'm going to now measure uh, my two meter lengths of the timbers that I need to then cut. and what I'll do is I'm going to square cut them first and then go back and cut the um, the angle
so what I've done there is um, the I've cut the internal uh, support members and put the angles on. Um, I've cut, I've marked them front and back because I can't guarantee I've got the exact angle front and back. So there might be a slight variable in the front to the back, but at least all the fronts are exactly the same and all the backs are exactly the same. Plus or minus a couple of mil, um, um, but I wanted to make sure that they're, they're all, yeah, plus or minus a couple of mil, if you like, difference between that end and that end. But, you know, I, I, I can live with that. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm just going to get some noggins put in to give this frame a, a really good strong uh, support. So I've got the um, the planks, if you like, set at night. Sorry, 790 millimeters, uh, which gives me at least four inches clear uh, either side of my tank um, as it drives across this bridge. Um, and this is going to need some real support. So I'm going to put some noggins in down the centre um, and just off the centre either side left and right like a ladder frame almost um, so I just wanted to make sure that I worked out the right dimensions so I've worked out the I'm using 38 mil so this is CLS timber 3v2 but by the time it's playing down if you buy it from the local UK DIY merchants it, it works out 38 mil thick so I've got th 38 mil um, just doing sort of, sort of basic calculations. I've got four of those at 38 mil. I've got an overall span of 790. I take off my three, uh, sorry, four times 38 mil, and that leaves me a dimension to be able to divide into or divisible, um, which gives me a noggin of 212 millimeters, which are these three noggins that you can see here. Then I'm just using a sash clamp just to test fit to make sure it all works together, and it does, as you can see. So that's 790 tight. The three noggins are in at 212 plus my four 38 mil timbers. That gives me a perfect 790. So I'm going to use that principle across uh, across the board. So what I'm going to do now is um, cut some more noggins, um, install those. I'll just use regular sort of posi drive fixings for those because you're not going to see them. They're going to be underneath. Um, and what I'll do is I'll offset them as well to make it life easier for me to, to drill and fix them together. So that's the next part of this. Fix the ladder frame inside. Um, so that's a nice solid frame. Then I'm going to have to cut down these external timbers here so that they match the same length. Um, and then once I've got the ladder frame uh, assembled, I'll then fix the sides to the, the, the sort of the subframe for the bridge. And then the next job is to cut and uh, fix all the planks into position so that we end up with our base of our bridge. So I'll, um, I'll crack on and uh, I'll probably speed this up. So um, I've gone ahead and done the other rail, the opposite side of the, the main sort of subframe. And I thought I'd walk you through how I do it here. So basically I've changed my mind. I was originally gonna have a 20 mil um, sort of packer underneath this to bring it up a little bit more, but I've gone down to 12 mil. It's only because now I've got the ramp in place, it just feels right. Um, so these have been cut to the right size, which are two meters. I'm just making sure using my fingers that they're flush. 
I then take um, a really good quality carpenter's pencil and just mark, if you like, trace along the profile. Not sure if that's picked up on the camera or not, but now I've got my profile traced. Now I'm going to use my sort of sit my little square to mark a center line. It's where I want to put my fixings. We'll start this end. Oops. <laughs> Well, I went a bit awry there. Always when the camera's on, this sort of thing happens. Never mind. So that's that. Um, no harm done. Now, what I want to do is make sure that um, I don't clash with the fixings used to, for the subframe. So I'm just going to put this back down here out of the camera shot for a moment. And then off the apex, so off this where the angle is, I've just double checked that I'm doing the same. Always worth checking. So just cross checked over there. So from the apex, um, we've got a, a marker. And I'm going to come off the 100 on here just so I've got an accurate. So we've got a marker of 50. And then 30 millimeters apart. Then we go dead center, and knowing that this is two meters, dead center is a meter. And I'm going to come off 15 millimeters either side. It gives me a 30 mil separation. That gives me two fixings, one end, two fixings in the middle, and two fixings on the end here. Again, I'll come off the, the 100, off the apex, 50, 30. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the end of this 200 and the same this end and I'll just double check that that is the case here and it is sharpie my permanent marker I'll now cross the just make sure they align just mark where I'm gonna go for the holes again there's no science in this is just what I feel will look all right I was going to set this up on my pillar drill, but actually I, I don't think I need to. Um, I don't actually, because I know. Um, so what I'm using here is I'm using M6 hex fixings. These are 70 mil thick. I'm not sure if that's going to be clear enough on the camera. Um, nice hex fix with a flange on it, 70 mil, very hefty, very heavy duty. Um, now these, got a, these have got a self drilling tip on them. So all I need to do is using, I've actually got a, a really smart um, spring-loaded center punch and now I've got the lines marked I can get that reasonably accurate on that point and that puts a great hole to start there and the great thing about this you don't need to drill being as it's softwood this spring-loaded punch puts a good enough size hole 
fairly accurate and just tighten it up. Fairly accurate starting point for the drill. Or in fact, just driving these through. So on that, the last one, I didn't actually drill. So, and that went really well. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be able to see this the way I've marked it. So I need to flip this around. So it doesn't make any, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Just line up the end, as long as you've got your 12 mil packer underneath. Uh, we've got our holes. I've got my impact driver with an eight mil hex socket on it. Uh, this is what you need for a six mil or an M6. So with that, I'm just gonna put one of my mini clamps on this. I've got a couple just to keep it again it's not as if we're building a house that we're all going to be living in here this is something that's going to be outside used to to, to drive a ta uh, you know a one six scale metal tank over so you know it's just this is more about making it look and, and feel right um, so if there's any structural engineers out there crit going to criticise me, please don't, because I'm not actually going to drive my own car over this. Um, and I'm fairly, ac I'm fairly happy with the rudimentary calculations that I've done, that this will be suffice for running a tank over. Um, I know Armatex say that the tanks are about 150 kilos, something like that, but then you've got like 50 kilos, haven't you, with all the motors and the batteries, so it's got to be over 200 kilos. I haven't weighed it, don't want to weigh it. It's got to be over 200 kilo, surely. So let's uh, let's get this first couple in, and then I'll show you. Don't want to over tighten it because I don't want the wood to be blistered. These impact drivers are phenomenal. I mean, my father-in-law, Richard, who you've met, if you've been following me, he's a carpenter. Um, he would faint, because this isn't how he used to do it in, the, in 19 diggity dicks, but it's how we do it in 2023. Going nice and easy, too easy in fact. But anyway, I'm all, I'm all over that. So really, that's it as far as I'm going to go today. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with progress. This is uh, just the subframe side rails on. Um, one thing I would say that uh, you should, should be mindful of is that I've used power tools to cut the timber here. I'm used to using, I'm using power tools for 40 years, um, ever since I was a young teenager. Um, and the tools have become more and more sophisticated, uh, a lot of safety built into them. Um, and I'm very comfortable with what, I've, what the tools I use, but everything I'm doing here can be done apart from, you know, using these bad boys can be done by using handsaw. There's no reason to think you can't do it by handsaw. Uh, it's just that the power tool just speeds up the whole process. But if you're not confident using power tools, by all means, use hand tools and it will, you'll get the same results. The other thing I'd say is that, look, this isn't a kit. This is just something that's come out of my head. Hopefully it gives you inspiration to do something similar. Um, it's not a perfect form. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly as it should be. It doesn't really matter. It's basically the purpose of this is I want to build something to drive my tank over and give it some kind of obstacle to get over there other than just driving around the garden. Um, and I can already start to see that this is going to be fun to, to, to play with with my tank. Um, I'm in my 50s and I'm talking about playing, but you know, these things are not toys, are they? And they're heavy duty stuff. I mean, they're heavy. Um, and I want this to, you know, I'm building this so it's going to be durable, um, but you know, uh, it's not going to be a perfect science, but it's, it's, it's a bit of me. And I really hope that if, if you're following me and, and I've inspired you to, to take a similar kind of course of action, 
you enjoy this you know this is your whatever you make here is going to be yours it's personal to you um, and you make it as you want it hopefully you can follow this as a sort of a pattern and if it works for you great if not you know if it inspires you to just uh, sketch up your own ideas or do something similar I'm going to take it forward and going to take it up and put some structure on it and all that but you don't necessarily need to do that I guess um, I've even thinking about putting some handrails on it to make it look as if it's got you know it is for pedestrians as well and who knows I might even get some figures to stick on it don't know early days and the world's my oyster um, but I'm really enjoying this and what else am I going to do I've built my tank now and I need something to play with um, so it's going to work hopefully with the tank uh, again uh, just have to say thank you for all your support uh, thanks for if you are continuing to follow me or if it's just the one of you left um, welcome and I uh, hope you're enjoying this I'm Tony I've built my tank now I want to build a bridge um, if you like this thumbs up subscribe